let's get started. First thing we're going to do is take our thread, work our way back to the bend of the hook, break that off. Next step is going to be taking our tan wrap strip. We're going to take a little clump off of that and then just cut it. These are going to be the feelers to the fly. Just gives the fly a little extra movement in the water. You don't have to use too much of this. These are just going to be a little accent for the craft for just to give the fly a little bit better movement, like I said. In there, cut that little butt off. Put some nice smooth wraps on top. Then we're going to work our way to the front of the hook, the eye of the hook. Then we're going to put our bead chain eyes on and put them pretty far forward leaving not too much room and then come in here and X wrap and parachute wrap to really secure those eyes like I say in all the videos you can use glue here I find for bone fishing sometimes they'll come up and sniff the fly and if they smell something funky they will not eat it so I prefer not to use glue then we're going to work our thread back to the front of the hook, sorry, the back of the hook. Next thing, we're going to take our tan craft fur, and we really want a nice candle wick shape to this. So we're going to pull all the short and the long fibers and kind of just stack it up, pulling the longer fibers and then matching it up with the shorter fibers until you get this really nice candle wick shape. One important thing to note here, this underfur, when we start pulling out the underfur, you want to save all that. That's going to be the body for our fly. So just set that aside. Make sure you save as much as you can of it. Really pull it out good. Set that aside for later. We're going to come in here. I like to do just around the length of the shank of the hook for the tail on this fly. I'm going to come in here, tie that down nice and tight with a couple few wraps working our way toward the eye of the hook. We're just going to take this and cut this off. I'm going to set that aside. Clean that up just a little bit, making a smooth ramp, working our way to the eyes, and then back forward. Gonna invert this fly. Next step, we're gonna take our EPIs and with some flat jaw pliers, we're just gonna figure out where we want them. I like to do it right past the bend of the hook and I'll crimp them right where I think I'm gonna tie them on, making them nice and flat so it's easier to tie them on together without building up bulk that's unnecessary. I'll show you that side. Tying them flat right on the side. One side, flip it back over, do the same thing on the other, crimp it, mark it where you think you're going to need it, Flip this back to me. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just tie that in right there. Make sure they're nice and even. And then this is pretty stiff mono, so we're going to be able just to bend it out. I actually like to bend it out, put a few wraps on the inside, holding it outwards on both of these eyes. And then I'll put some right on top and we're just going to clean those wraps up a little bit work our way to the eyes and back forward next step is we're going to take a set of silly legs this is one strand we're going to fold it around the thread take it and make a V with it we're going to bring it to the top of the fly and we're going to capture it while holding that V just to give some separation to the legs. 
We're going to tie those in right there so they stay spread out. And then after we got that done, we're going to take our flash. This is one strand of crystal flash black. We're going to double it over and cut that in half. After we double it over, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a V and tie it right on top. Kind of spread it out just a little bit. These are going to be the feelers to the fly antennas. I'm going to take our scissors and just trim that pretty roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. Same thing with the legs. I like to come in here and just cut them right now just so they're a little bit shorter to work with. I like cutting them a little bit longer than the craft fur. After that we're going to work our way all the way to the front of the fly. And now that under fur that you have off of the craft fur, that's going to start the body of this fly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of dubbing to my thread. Just a little bit, don't go too crazy with it. We're going to take our dubbing and pull out just a little bit, nice and fluffy, so it's kind of spread out. And then we're just going to kind of twist it around the thread. Not adding too much at once. You want the thickness to be pretty full, but not too, too thick. I'm going to set that dubbing aside. And then we're just going to start wrapping right over the body. One key thing to note, as you're wrapping further back toward the eye of the hook, you kind of want to go thicker to thinner, building a profile to the body. This gives it a little bit more lifelike look. This is going to have two sets of legs segmented in the body. So once we have this done right here, I'm just going to go a little bit further. I'm going to pull all that dubbing forward. I'm going to take another set of our silly legs, wrap it around the thread, making another V. I'm going to pull it down and go to both sides of the fly. And we're just going to finesse those legs just a little bit, get them right where we want them. And once those are tied in, I'm actually going to come in here, take my scissors and just trim those a little bit so it's easier to work with. Put a few wraps just to build a nicer ramp off of that bump that we created. Bring my thread right back to right behind those legs. And then I'm going to continue the process of a little bit of dubbing wax and a little bit of craft fur dubbing. Another important thing to note when you're doing this, once you add the legs in, moving your thread right behind the legs and pulling them forward just a little bit and really putting some nice tight wraps behind allows them to stay spread out long ways just so it holds them nice and in place. The dubbing will hold it in place. I'm just going to add a little bit more here. We are going to be picking this dubbing out to give it a little bit more movement. So we got that done. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my second set of legs. Same thing as the first step. Take our legs, make a nice V, kind of grab in your fingers so it's easier. Pull down. You can even X-wrap these legs if you want. It does make it a little bit trickier, but it does hold them pretty good. The best tip is just to make them as even as possible from the start. Alright, so once we got that done, we're going to continue with our dubbing wax. I'm actually going to just trim these just a little bit just to get them out of the way. 
Don't trim them too short because you still want them. I'm going to come in here with some more dubbing. Keep working our way down the thread. Should be enough to finish the fly, but we'll see. I'm actually going to put one wrap in front of these eyes, or sorry, in front of these legs, just to hold them exactly where I want it. I put three wraps. And then I'm going to wrap behind them, pinching the legs and moving them forward. That holds them nice and in place. I'm going to come in with my thread and I'm going to do a couple wraps, X wraps over the eyes. Sometimes the craft for falls off the dubbing line. That's okay. You could actually just pull it off, rough it up a little bit, and put it back over it. I come in here and X wrap over the eyes, and pull everything forward, capture it right behind the eye of the hook, and whip finish. I like to do two sets of three. Just cut that off right there. Then I'm going to flip this fly over, grab all four legs, and trim them to the same size. It's personal preference how long you want the legs. I like to do a little longer than normal. I'm going to come in here and trim the front ones again just a little bit. I'm actually going to trim them right to the length of the craft for in front. Then I'm going to come in here with my botkin. I'm actually going to rough all of this up. And whatever parts you see that are too bulky, I'm just going to take my finger and kind of rip the craft for out. Making it a nice tapered look, thinner in the front working our way to thicker in the back. This fly is supposed to be just a little shaggy to, to give the fly a lot of mo movement. We'll take our eyes and bend them back just a little bit to get them more visible. And that's going to be the finished fly. This is an incredible bonefish fly. Perfect for the Bahamas flats, Caribbean flats, anywhere really. Got little antennas. The rabbit strip gives it a nice little bit of movement. Changing just the weight of the eyes really allows you to fish a lot of different water columns with this fly. And hook size, so you could tie this from all the way from a size 8 all the way up to a 1 if you really needed. It's just a great all-around little fly. And that's going to be the Verca's Mantis Shrimp.